Hello and welcome to Company of Heroes 2, Assault of Ardan. Now, Company of Heroes has always been one of my favourite RTS games. In fact, if I'm honest, if we go way, way back, it was Act of War by Atari and there is a new Act of Vengeance coming out, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on that very closely. Brilliant game. Uh, I also like one of the Warhammer games, I can't remember which one it was. But Company of Heroes, you know, being uh, into the old military stuff, absolutely loved this game. So... I'm not sure what it was, but it was always, even when Company of Heroes 2 first came out, I just couldn't put my finger on why I loved the first one more. I I still don't know what it was about that game. Um, Company of Heroes 2 was, I quite enjoyed it. Um, and I thought I would try this new, even though they call it an expansion, it is its own standalone single player campaign. And I absolutely think it's fantastic. Really, really good. And I just wish I'd recorded some of the early missions in this single player campaign that were just, wow, fantastic. And you actually really actually start to care about some of your units. I am a noob at the game, but it doesn't matter. It's one of those games that's actually really enjoyable. And with this new campaign, they've introduced a lot of new things. All right. These dumbass Germans have their vehicles amassed in one spot. Gives us a prime opportunity. Let's take them out. We should be getting some extra armor to help sort the crowd tanks out. So, watch for reinforcements. Now, I've got a report of an AT gun in the area. See if you can track it down and put it to some good use. Steady up. Shake a leg. Let's go. Now, first of all, I can tell that there has been a massive overhaul on the graphics. Even from the first Company of Heroes 2, it feels as though they've updated a lot. And there are lots of cool, real nice features in here, such as the snow stays when the footprints are there. It will stay, it doesn't disappear. And the same with the tracks on the vehicles. Some of the explosions are really cool, or the vehicles will stay on fire if they're not quite exploded. And the snow and smoke and debris. And it really is a, a really beautiful looking game once you actually, you know, start to appreciate what's in here. Now, I'll, this is one of the campaigns, and as I said, I'm not the best. And at the beginning, you get to pick three out of four different companies. And as you can see at the bottom left, above the mini-map, there is a company strength. And the more times that I actually fail or suck at this, then my units get smaller and smaller and smaller. And I suppose you have to start the campaign again. Um, I'm actually playing on standard and I find this quite a challenge. Some of the other missions I really enjoyed, it came right down to Nooth and Tail. Nooth and Tail, Tooth and Nail. And this one I actually... Well, it doesn't quite go to plan, but I will flip this over now to my commentary that I actually had from in the game thinking I was uh, planning this well and uh, it all went tits up. Right, so I'm thinking if I keep one, if I keep this vehicle looking down this main crossroads, and we'll get the anti-tank going. In fact, I think I'm going to swap these two around. Get him to cover. All right, we'll get some more units out. I think at some point we'll have to start getting them some um, some bazookas and update some of these weapons, which you have to actually research here at the uh, at the barracks. Right, obviously I haven't got enough resources. Let's keep turning them out. Graphics are really good, are they? It's really weird you actually start to really care for your units. <laughs> Especially when you get them to veterancy status and they die. It's like, oh no. Right, so put the little flag here so that when they, when they spawn out, they will go to that flag. Right, yep. Yeah. Keep these two together. Let's get a move on. That's how I might get him to basically defend this flag. Although I'm going to have to make a decision soon because the AI has got all three stars in the minimap down at the bottom and those are the actually objectives, but I need this to keep me in supply. So let's start to move up into this area and see if we can take this first one. Quick sub of Yorkshire tea. Ah, smash it. Right, right, okay, so we've got some... Uh, right, we want to keep that vehicle out of the line of that. Otherwise we're going to get decimated. That is a big fucking anti right. I've got to move this quick before they get shot off. Oh, move, move, move! Did you get me? No, I've got to that. Fuck. Right, let's see if we can take that out with uh, these guys. Capture that point and then we'll get over that AT. Go to the AT. Oh, fuck. Right, get on that quick. Get on that quick. Oh, shit, I'm going to 
gonna get decimated. I mean, if you look at the smoke and everything coming off here, brilliant. Uh, especially when you get a, a tank that's hitting and sets on fire and it burns out of the turret at the top of the grip. Bollocks. Well, that was utter noobishness. Uh, let's get the old paras in. If anybody can fucking smash some heads, it's them. Right, you guys. Um, stick together. Reinforce the top one, hold it, or do I try and attack this middle one? Yeah. Look at me, Paris. Come on, lads, get hold of that. Get hold of that and defend this point. Really, I suppose I should move that down to the main crossroads. Yeah. Let's get some more infantry up here to support you, and we'll get you a little bit further back. Give you a bit more line of sight, I think. More friendly vehicles just came in. They need orders. It's all about the infantry at this beginning of the game. Uh, capturing before we move on to like the midsection game, which is like your, your light scout tanks and things like that. As we move up to the end game, when we get the uh, larger tanks. So I'm going to move these support vehicles up. These are like the anti-infantry, and have we got enough? Uh, yeah, we've got enough to get them a bar weapon, which makes them more effective against infantry. And I think eventually we're going to have to research the bazookas, bazooka zookas. That's just going to get annihilated. So try and get in there, it gives me a little bit of uh, scouting ability to see what's there. Ah, oh, that's a bit of lost that folks. Right, so we know there's something incoming. Move that. Oh, God. Move this back. I'll be time to bring in some more paras in a minute. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So we can get a gun running. I hate the way that when you put the gun running, the, the AI knows immediately before it's heard anything. It makes it very difficult to use it against the AI. It's a lot easier when you're using it against uh, a real person. Battles in this, the multiplayer is absolutely amazing. Uh, really strategic. If you like strategy games, then you can't get better than uh, Company of Heroes, to be honest with you. I do love my Milsons, but um, what War RTS has never really got into Men of War. Too much micromanagement. I thought the graphics were supposed to be amazing. I thought they sucked, personally. Um, and I can run m most things on, on full. This is on ultra. Um, running on a 780 Ti, so it's only the process that really slows you down on some of this, including armor. Right, you go fix this. Tanks everywhere. Ah, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to get annihilated. Uh, God, they've got three stars already, and as you can see at the top of the screen, we're nearly annihilated. The blue bar when it gets to the bottom, that's us finished, and they've got all three points in the minute. Come on, we've got to pull this back. In fact, it may even be too late at this point to pull this back. Come on, capture it, capture it. I think I've kind of come into this without a strategy. I should have worked out what I was actually going to do. Maybe completely dominate this one point and lock it down. You know, really get a good defence in there, get some bunkers in and everything else. Some 50 cals down in the bunkers and stuff. Uh, and then move on to the next one. Whereas the AI just seems to um, quickly grab all three. And then it's a it's a panic station then trying to capture all three back and you're moving your troops around. Oh Yorkshire tea. Nickers off. Good girl. Right. <clears throat> Let's move this gun back here so that we don't get attacked. That gives us a little bit of um look at me pretending I've got some strategy. <laughs> I haven't got a clue what I'm doing now. <laughs> it's so fucked up from what I wanted to do when we first started playing. Right. Uh, we can actually play this machine again if I do it, but obviously my uh, my troops is going to get less and less and less until I have to restart the campaign. Yes, it is dynamic. Let's get some more paras in here. Yeah, not much use using the anti uh, anti armor gun there on infantry. Right. Well, they're going to get taken out anyway. Uh, paras are here as well. It looks like they've dropped with a 50 cal, but I'm just going to put this bunker down with a 50 cal and see if I can actually cover this position. I can see at the top I've nearly absolutely been annihilated. I may have to do this mission again. God damn it. 
But the actual level I did before was almost like in a snow blizzard in forest. Absolutely great. Graphics are amazing. I was really, really impressed. Trees on fire and all sorts going on. Oh, God damn it. We've lost this. We've lost this. I might as well wrap this up now. Anyway, guys, I'd love to know if any of you have got to come with Heroes 2 and what you think about it versus the first one. Personally, I did prefer the first one until this new expansion came out, and now, nah, I can't go back to the other one now. The graphics on this, the gameplay, and uh, this the single player is just really, really enjoyable. I never really got into the single player campaign on the first one. I never finished it, should I say. Uh, but this one just makes me want to keep coming back and back and back, and you actually start to care about your units. Um, once the game quits, I'll show you that you can actually, depending on how well you play, you get extra points that you can upgrade your units. And as I said, the whole campaign is dynamic. Multiplayer, fantastic, and there's even co-op missions, so if you want to get on with a buddy and do some of the co-op challenges, you can as well. And that helps you unlock new skins and abilities and things like that as well. So, definitely my favourite RTS game at the minute, but probably I'd put it up there of all time, actually, up there with Act of War. And this is what you actually see at the end of the screen, and there is usually a little bit of a spiel at the end, which we can have a listen to. I won't make you listen to it all, but you get the idea. This shit work. I'm not cut out for this office of bullshit. So as you can see here, I've got some points up at the top. I've got 42 points here that I can spend to upgrade my airborne troops. Uh, different missions will be, depending on which one you picked, I picked mechanized, airborne, and infantry. And there's also a support class as well. So we can come in and start spending these points now, um, such as dropping in a second set of uh, paras with uh, an MG, things like that. And so forth, so forth. But anyway, to give this a score out of 10, and you don't really want to give it a score out of 10 because everybody's perspective is different, but if you're into RTS games and war games, do you know what? I'm going to go the whole way. I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to play some more. Let me know what you think. Thumbs up, subscribe if you like. If not, sorry. Bye-bye.